Hello, welcome. In this video, I'll show you how to create a circuit simulation in all team designer from scratch. So what you do is go to file new project. I'll go with the local and let's call this the op amp simulation. Okay. This would be in my public folder documents, all DM, and I'll allow constraint management by default, just because, all right. So what we're going to do is copy this circuit essentially but I'll show you how to make that step by step. This is a circuit imported from LT Spice. If you want to know how to do that, click on the link somewhere around this video. Now I can right click to my new project and add a new schematic to project that is schematic. Mind you, our active project is the one that I'm working on here. Op amp simulation. Ignore the voltage game demo. Okay. Go ahead and do control S to save. I'll give it the same name as the project name. So op amp simulation, I'll hit down on the keyboard, delete the extension, hit enter. That saves it as a schematic doc. If you don't know where your file is saved, you can right click, then choose explore. It will pull up the folder that the file is located. That's the schematic, the project file, PCB project file. And that's fine. You will need your mix signal extension to get that you need to go to your profile go to extensions and updates then look for your purchased category of extensions it's not it doesn't cost anything to add this but you do go in the purchase section type in mixed then it will show up from as mix simulation you install that you know you click and download install you'll restart altium and then you're ready to go once that's installed and you go to your schematic, you have the option for simulate. Here is where the fun happens. You can start placing simulation generic components. Okay, I'll expand this. VSRC is the voltage source. So you double click on that and then place a couple of voltage sources. Really. Voltage source one, two. This is going to be another DC source. And then, yeah, that looks good. What else do we need? We need like a V sinusoidal voltage source. So I'll go ahead and place this here. All right. We'll also need an operational amplifier. So let's go type in op amp. I'll choose the op amp with power terminals. Then choose resistor. So I'll type in resistor, double click on that. And I'll place a few resistors. To rotate a component while it's on your cursor, you hit the space bar. Okay. Place two of those, space bar, rotate. Let's get some capacitors now. So type, type in cap. I'm gonna place one here. We will need a ground. So you go over here and you have a lot of options. If you hold down the symbol, choose the place ground. This works for circuit simulations. I place a few of these. One for each of my sources, my reference nodes and everything. Hit escape. I'm going to close this window, click, drag, select from right to left or left to right. If you do left to right, you select everything. You have to enclose everything to select everything, but a partial selection won't select a device. However, if you click right to left, even if you partially touch a component like this, it will be selected. So quick little tip. All right. So now let's add some components. So I use the middle mouse button to click, hold and zoom, pan, zoom in, control W to start wiring. Okay. To end the wire, I would right, right click with my right mouse button, but still stay in wire mode. Okay. Let's make our connection to the positive side. That's my negative. This will be my Negative V, this will be my positive V here. Let's see what else we've got. I can also go here for my place wire command in the up in the top menu bar. And then I'll go between this voltage divider or resistor divider. Make my connections. Right mouse button and click and hold and drag on the schematic sheet to pan it. Connect a capacitor resistor. 
Okay. Okay, so by the end of this video, you'll know how to simulate a circuit starting from scratch and being able to get your ideas validated uh, quickly. Now with this DC voltage, I'll give it a double click on it and there's a DC magnitude, I'll set this to 70. Minus 70, if I double click on the device and set that. See how that updates. Okay, I'll call this plus V. So I need a net alias. Click and hold down and then choose the net label. With the net label, hit the tab key while it's attached to my cursor before I place it. And I will call this plus V. All team is fine with that. Nomenclature, the net naming convention. Uh, so I placed it on there. Now I'll go with minus V, hit tab, unpause, place that minus V. Where do those go? Well, this minus V, this negative 70 volts, will go to power my negative rail. And the positive V will go to power my positive rail. Honestly, these rails, are they could be either positive or negative, doesn't matter. They're like interchangeable and enter. Okay, what else do we want here? My net label, I will give a net label to my input voltage. So hit tab call this in okay actually I would even call this in one but we'll just keep it simple and call it in actually you know what in one is a good idea hit tab that's good for my resistors if I want to change my resistor value I would go and you know show more just to show you the options here you can choose temperature TC value, TC1, but I'll set my resistor value to 16.2K. It doesn't matter what case you put the K in. I'll use lowercase, however. Double click on this next resistor. 16.9K kilo ohm resistor. For this resistor, we go with the 432 kilo ohms. Capacitor would be 10 picofarad. Then you have your net label for out. So choose net label or hit tab on the keyboard. I'm going to name this out in all caps. It doesn't have to be in all caps. I just like this style. Okay, this is looking good. I can double click on my op amp to set the gain however I want but we'll leave it like that. All right, so the gain will be governed by pretty much the resistors in this feedback loop here for my power or reference voltage of sorts that gets dropped down by the voltage reg, uh, the voltage by the resistor divider network. This would be 2.5 volts for the DC magnitude. For a sinusoidal voltage source, we need the DC magnitude, or well, the offset. It can be 1.25 or whatever you want it to be. The amplitude 1.35 volts. So pretty small voltage signal. And then the frequency 10 kilohertz. Easy stuff. And what's real cool here is when I click on it, I can show the preview of the signal waveform. And this gives me what I expect. Now let's go ahead and name these devices. So we're going to annotate the circuit, go to tools, annotation, annotate schematics quietly, click yes. Now we have the names like V2, V3, U1, V4, and so on. I'll use VF to fit the circuit on the screen. That looks good. Let's go ahead and save this with Control S to save. Now we're ready to start simulation. Go to simulate and then we'll go to simulation dashboard to set up things. Hit start verification. For preparation, I want to add probes to my output voltage. So I'll click on the voltage probe option. The probe sticks to the cursor 
and then moves that it automatically pans the schematic, which is cool. Go ahead and place it on the out net. Change the color of this output to say something bright and noticeable like yellow. I like to add a probe for my input signal as well. So I'll choose my voltage probe, place one on my in, just to see the comparison between the two signals and then set the color to maybe like a lighter blue or something. Save that design with control S. And now this is set up and I will set this to transient. So on the transient, I'll go from zero to 250 micro seconds in time. I won't set the step. I can use initial conditions for your analysis and so on, but I'll just hit run at this point and my simulation works. If I want to focus on one signal, I can click on one here, scroll up or down or select each individual signal if I want to, to focus on that. I can click on the same signal that's highlighted to make all signals active. Okay. So this is like, this is called dimming essentially. I'll right click and I can save the simulation results and settings and waveform. Okay. And hit save. Right click, close that. If I go back to my simulation dashboard, I go to my results option and it has the simulation results saved. I can then click on the ellipses show the results, load the profile, edit the title if I want. Okay, so that's how you simulate a circuit in Altium Designer from scratch. If you want to see how to take this from schematic to PCB, check out the next video where I show you step by step how to do that in Altium. Thanks for watching. Okay. So by the end of this video, you'll know how to simulate a circuit starting from scratch and being able to get your ideas validated uh, quickly.